Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I am Captain Logan. And I am Eric. And everybody, Eric has been here for an entire year now, an entire yeah. year, year to the day that we are recording this Hopefully right now. Hopefully everyone has, uh, has has figured out that I'm living here. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. that has if all been cleared up. has been confused for any of the last 365 days, <laughs> Eric lives right here in Geek Solution headquarters. Right there. Yeah. And so today we thought we would do a celebratory video about, about this fact. This was Eric's idea, and he was like, you know, I'm about to be here for a year. We should do something cool for the channel. And his idea was for us to do a... Uh, to do an interview uh, with each other. So we tried to think of questions uh, for each other about stuff that we are not already familiar with, things we don't already know about the other person. Most of mine ended up being like vague philosophical questions. Oh, okay. I didn't get real super philosophical. We thought we would try to make this uh, like at least tangentially uh, related to popular culture. So uh, just so that it you know fit well with what we do here, of course, on the channel. But uh, things... Th th this might get somewhat personal just in uh, how you personally relate to uh, popular culture. Think about, if you've seen this, think of the uh, video that my dad and I did a couple years ago uh, where, where dad asked me... I, I, it was like 10 or 15 questions uh, that you... The, the things you might not know about Captain Logan, uh, and we're going to kind of do that with each other. Uh, we went with seven, uh, the somewhat arbitrary number seven, um, possibly because that might end up being the number of years that Eric ends up living here. So, Eric, uh, any other preamble you want to do? I don't think before so. Before we get rolling We on didn't this? really, like, hammer this out. We didn't. We, we didn't. were just like, what if we did, like, an interview? Where I was like, what if we do, like, an interview thing? And then Cap was like, all right, I wrote some questions. I was like, I guess I should figure out what my questions are. Well, like I said, the only parameters we really set were, it needs to be at least somewhat related to pop culture and be something that you don't know about the other person that people might find interesting. But I wanted to keep this as wide open, really, as possible. Uh, so I don't know how our lists are going to compare. Um, our list could look, uh, of questions, could look nothing like each other mm. whatsoever. We didn't, I think that's like, real uh, likely get together and like brainstorm or anything no well yeah but I mean I, mean, I, I just I didn't want to like like shackle us yeah you know yeah. To, to too much so I think it's okay that this wasn't you know horribly planned the only thing I was concerned about is that uh, in being as, as broad as, as we were with this that it might end up just being kind of like an after dark mm -hmm. so if you're not a patron you'll get to maybe sort of see what those are like to some degree although this is not going to be uh, uh, topics of conversation uh, and it's going to be kind of a one sided conversation I have one for, that for might be these. a slightly naughty question I guess oh Really? Okay. Not really. Well, when I, Not when I like said after, after dark, dark, I just I just meant in like you know just <laughs> random because I think I'll, I, I think after dark gets interviewing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're all just I'll just be like, you know, what do you think of this? Or like, like we brainstorm a lot on that show. We bounce things off each other, and uh, a lot of it is is like you know, here's my personal opinion on an, on a, on a thing. What do you think of that? Mm. This won't be that so much, but mm -hmm. okay. Uh, since this was your idea, Eric, and uh, since we're doing this in honor of uh, your being here, and by the way, may I just say uh, that I love having you around. I love being here, and that this has been great. And uh, I, Eric's, Eric, and I have gotten so much done in the last year. We made so many videos together, and uh, it's been it's been just just a blast. So uh, we'll we'll try not to tear up, but it's but we've we've had a great time together. Uh, These Eric, are our game faces. Once the camera goes off, it's just screaming. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we try not. Back to in your room. <laughs> You know you only come out for dinner and when you're going to work and when we're making videos. But if you want to see some of that, that's what Patreon is for. <laughs> that's a joke. Eric, uh, would you like to begin? Yes. What is your first question so My for first me, question sir? is, yeah. what do you think, kid you, would think of your life right now, what your job is, all of that? Great question. That's, that's great. Thanks for that. Um... I, I mean, he'd be he'd be floored and bamboozled. Uh, the I think about this every now and again, uh, and some of it is we're living in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, some of this is less about the cool thing I get to do for a job, and uh, and, and and you know because like, you would have to explain what your job even is. Well, yeah, because it, it, such a thing didn't exist back then. Although I I, I have had this thought uh, when when I was a kid, uh, I used to think you know I always wanted a video camera, mm -hmm. and I uh, my my dream job was writing before it was making videos. But I I always uh, had kind of a romantic fascination with, with with the idea of making movies and stuff and uh, I, I always uh, wish I could make a regular TV show for myself and for uh, the people who lived in my house you know my family and like every Saturday I would like show them whatever I made 
late. And I always wanted to do that. I got a camera too late in order to do that kind of thing. So uh, now I, I, I kind of do that, mm. uh, but you know, for for an audience on on YouTube and, and with a bazillion shows. Uh, but I think about that every now and again. Anyway, um, so part of my my younger self, if he came to the future and saw what I did now, part part of the bamboozlement would just be we're living in the future and and and, and the amazing technology that uh, comparatively from then that we have. You know, uh, the the phones in our pockets that allow us to look up anything at any point. Um, the the sophistication of the video technology, uh, webcams, um, Wikipedia, you know, just all the stuff that we could, and, and, and how easy it is to edit stuff now. Uh, when I first did any editing, uh, it was in junior high, and uh, we hadn't quite moved over to digital yet. So you were still using film. Yeah, and we were still, uh, we, we did a lot of editing from like VHS tape to VHS tape. Uh, it was real low budget, obviously, but it was, this was like 98, 99. The year after I got out of that class, uh, they went mostly from um, d uh, doing it the analog way to the digital way. But uh, I, I have I have done analog editing, uh, and I've used the control board that uh, in an, that that uh, the analog way uh, lets you do. Um, like titles and things, which is in incredibly uh, limited, and you only have so many font types, and uh, it's hard to get it not to like jiggle and stuff, and and, and it's uh, it's just interesting how far we've come from that. But just as far as like like what I actually, yeah, I mean. I always, like, I think a lot of us kind of dreamed about finding some way to make a living out of whatever my favorite things were. I remember when I was in, when I was like a freshman or sophomore, uh, looking up online Star Trek jobs. I remember, <laughs> I remember looking around to see if there was anything with Star Trek knowledge I could make money at doing, working for someone else doing. Um, I also always kind of had a, a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit and wanted to, in some way or another, work for myself. So um, I think I would probably we, you know, you know, come to the future and be kind of blown away um, by what I ultimately got to do. But I think I would also there would be some things maybe I would be a little bit disappointed with. Um, I have to say, and not that I have any 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 massive regrets or anything, but um, I think when I was a kid, I envisioned myself being more published by now, mm. and so uh, I think I'd be like, oh, okay, so you've got this YouTube thing. Like once once I I got over the coolness of like getting to make videos for a living and talking about this stuff, uh, I'd, I'd be like. And just the technology, I'd be like, yeah, okay, so you've got this, you've got this following on YouTube, that's neat, but like, where are the books? Like, you were supposed to be more prolific than this. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing kind of took over the other. I also think I would be very confused by my current interest in nonfiction. Because growing up, I didn't really care that much about history and stuff. I mean, it wasn't that I was completely disinterested in in history, but I didn't like reading nonfiction. I didn't really like biopics like I do now. Like that mm. stuff just didn't really interest me all that much. So uh, I could be interested in like a lecture or something when when somebody was really interesting mm. uh, with with history and and I like I would like it in the context of fiction. But I wanted fiction all the time, mm. and I don't have that anymore. Uh, so I think I would also just be kind of surprised by the, the ways in which I have changed. What do you think you think of the Batcave? Um, so. I, can I tell a story real quick? Sure. And I don't mean to be on this topic for too long, but this but this one was easy, and I expected a hard question. <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, I, I like, you like dream second, of having a second grade. Um, I always dreamed of having a uh, superhero secret headquarters, and uh, I I when I was in first grade, uh, first second grade, uh, first grade, um, I made up a superhero called Tornado Man. And I used to bring uh, a ski mask and a big brown coat and gloves to school. And it could be a 90 degree day. I would wear that because it was my costume. Mm. And I was Tornado Man. And I had a friend. His name was Les. I remember that. And Les um, I, I was, was like my sidekick. And at one point, uh, he... I think it was him or maybe it was some other kid. But, but, but somebody that played Tornado Man with me on the playground uh, would uh, I claimed... That because we because we talked about it like like reality, and I would try to convince people that I had actually gone out and fought crime in the middle of the night when we weren't going to school, and I and there was this kid, I think it was Lash, who tried to convince me that he knew how to make a souped up superhero's secret headquarters, and that he could set my room up so that when I pressed a button or pulled the trigger, like the tick expects Arthur to have in his apartment when he first meets him, I uh, that the, the, like the screens would pop out and there'd be like a 
science lab and all this stuff, and I kept imagining what my room would look like turned into that, and I was really disappointed because he kept saying that he'd set it up, and I would like 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 pull something and nothing happened, and he would keep saying, "Oh, you just didn't pull the right thing," but he but he claimed that he broke in and changed my room, uh, so. I think that I, I, I think first grade me uh, would 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 look at this and in in his mind it would be what he always wanted. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, Eric, your first question. Thanks for that question. That was a good. That was a good introductory question. Um, I'm really into this now, uh, Eric. Um, so, as you know, I am uh, not the biggest fan of sword and sorcery fantasy. Sure. Uh, that is uh, kind of one of my least favorite genres to look into. I want to know if you have a genre that you're either not interested in at all or a lot less interested in than the rest, because you're so much more kind of well-rounded with that kind of thing than I am. Is there any kind of genre that you tend to balk at, or is there one that you used to be that way with, but you've kind of like, uh, uh, like, like grown up and evolved about that? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm not the biggest like rom com fan. <laughs> I, I, I like yeah. to I like to think that I can be won over by anything by quality. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Um. Yeah, I like to think that too, but it takes a minute sometimes. I'm not a big fan of nautical pictures. Really? Anything at sea? That's mm -hmm. kind of boring. <laughs> I I don't have I don't have genres, but like I tend to be bored when we're in the desert. I tend to be bored when we're Locations. at sea. Locations. Yeah. Um. Uh, Genre-wise, I, I don't know, I I can get bored by just atypical drama, specifically mm -hmm. maybe even historical dramas. I mean, I like some of them, but like, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not a sword and sandal guy at all. That's not a thing I care about. Um, not you mean like Arabian Nights and that kind of thing? Well, well, more like, um, I mean, I guess I like Spartacus and... Uh, oh, okay. And, and, and some of that stuff, alright, like I like 300, okay, but like that's not, that's not a thing I get excited about. Um, it's like historical fiction, just in general, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I. It's interesting because I like fantasy. I'm not a big fan of medieval things. Um, like I'm, and and one of the things that kind of sucks about the the kind of rise of fantasy right now is it's so gritty and realistic, and I'm so bored by that. Like I want there to be dragons and magic all the time. I think the Dark Age is actually a really boring time. I'm. Just, I just don't care, and I also don't like real armor. I think real armor looks really boring and generic. I need it to be fancier and snazzier and less practical. So do you like Renaissance festivals? I do like Renaissance festivals. I do. Because they, um, they are like that. Yeah, but it's not a whole narrative about it. Yeah, I don't okay. know. Um, I, 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 I like Ren Fairs. I mean, I don't love Ren Fairs, but that's mostly because I don't have enough money to go to Ren Fairs. Because it's all about the, ooh, that's really cool. I'd like to have that sort. Oh, $200? Never mind, sir. Yeah. Um, but no, People Chess is my favorite thing in the world. Um, I love people chess, but I hate that they, you watch people chess, and then they get halfway through and they're like, come back in two hours for the rest of people chess, and I never get to see the end of people chess. Um, but no, I, I guess kind of just uh, medieval stuff I'm not actually in love with if it's going for realism. I don't want realism. I think that's really what it is about history. I don't like realistic history. I like... I like fantasy history. So, but but you do like some biopics and stuff. I do like bi uh, yeah. Um, I if I if I'm engaged with the character and stuff. Yeah. Um, but 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 maybe it's just you know you walk into something that looks kind of fantastical in the sense that you see a lot of a lot of fantastical things in that setting and mm. then it isn't that and so that's yeah. kind of a downer. Like you know you know you're not you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna walk into um, uh, like. I'm trying to think, like Frost Nixon and expect dragons, you know. No, 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 but it's not set in the medieval times. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't. You're not gonna walk into the founder and expect like flying hamburgers, you know. There's well, not gonna be anything fantastical I mean, about I that. I could expect that, but I'd be sorely let down. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, I'm not. Nothing's coming to me off the top of my head, really. Why isn't Michael Keaton wearing a Batman suit? Yeah. When he is pretending to be Ray Kroc, why is that? Um, I, I, I guess if there's anything, it's really that like. David Lynchy, Stanley Kubricky. Like, if a movie just doesn't have answers, doesn't make sense, I'm not interested. I don't mind trippy. It's gotta be a story. Yeah, I don't mind trippy. I don't like it when it's like experimental visual art. Mm -hmm. I need to have characters. I need to have a story. Yeah. Um, and the second a movie, you don't want you don't want a movie to be performance art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 real anti that kind of thing. Not like it getting made, but it's not for me. Mm -hmm. um, I have no interest in something like that. Um, but so yeah, that's that's my best guess. Okay. Or science fiction that's too military based. Yeah. Boy, I just don't care. And I don't care about military based stuff most of the time in general. I don't like military stuff. I don't, like, I, I don't know if I've told you. I don't like fatigues. <laughs> I like 
I, I've discovered I like uh, stories built around soldiers, mm-hmm. uh, specifically Vietnam vets. I think Vietnam's really fascinating. I think Vietnam vets are really fascinating, specifically when they came back and how poorly we treated them and all of that. Um, uh, but I don't know, military politics and all that stuff, I just don't care, especially if it's in something that I think shouldn't. Like, the second soldier show up in Transformers or something, it's like, okay, I get it. Like, Oh, that second Fantastic Four movie. That's half yeah. the reason that's not, yeah. that's not watchable. Yeah. I mean, we watched it. It is watchable. Well, it's watchable in the sense that you can <laughs> press play, and if I said I'd make a video about it, I'm not going to leave the chair. Yeah, but, but ten minutes later, it's done, so. That's true. It is, it is too short. Okay. So my second one. Yeah. Um, actually, really, kind of a similar question. Oh, interesting. Is there a franchise that you wish you'd gotten into when you, when you were younger, but now you think it's too big or it's just too late to really invest in it uh, in a major way? Is there something you think you missed the train on? There are certainly things, yeah, and, and, and there's stuff that like I've kind of tried to sort of get on board with, but I know I'm never going to be a mega fan of. Mm. And I had this with Star Wars Extended Universe, and then it went away, and so it didn't matter. <laughs> and like I got lucky with that, because I was able to start you know, uh, reading the new stuff. Yeah, you now technically know more about Star Wars than I do, because all the things I know don't count. Don't even really count anymore, except the, the new stuff is certainly, a lot of the time, like based on the old stuff mm. or, or informed by it. Uh, I had that with Doctor Who. And once again, then they made new Doctor Who, uh, but I still have always been behind on that. I've tried with, with old Doctor Who. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually I have a tough time with it. I actually made a genuine effort, and then it left Hulu. I, I, I started with the third Doctor, because I like the third Doctor, and it's set in um, present day, because mm-hmm. he gets trapped here. And it's so much better for me, because it's not tacky sets and things with no budget. So I was like, okay, well, I can work my way up to that when he starts going to the tacky sets and the poor costumes, because it's it's too too far away from me. Uh, and then they took it off Hulu. And I, I have it. felt this way um, a lot, and, and and I've talked about Doctor Who, where I got to a point where it, it got it got so popular, and Ray was talking about it, and uh, I wasn't loving where I was with it as much as people were talking about it, and so I fell off and got and kind of lost interest in it. At some point, I'll catch up, or I'll start. We had some place that I find more interesting but because all these stuff because I great. didn't like I didn't care for Matt Smith. I don't like Matt Smith. Either. Sorry, it's just, that was that wasn't my. Favorite. There were things about it that I liked, okay, but I felt like he was he was kind of. And again, this is having not watched all of it, but like I kind of felt like he was a little bit poor man's um, tenant. But anyway, um, and then I just felt like what he was doing was too close to tenant, but like less mature in a kid. You know, I just mm. I wasn't sure about that. Uh, anyway, but. Um, but I had this with Stargate for the longest time, and uh, I finally just bit the bullet and said, I'm just going to watch Atlantis, uh, because I hadn't seen enough of SG-1, and uh, it was like seven or eight years in before I started watching very much of it, and I was like, it's just, it's, it was it, it was the time hard to get my hands on for cheap, and now it's really cheap, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll eventually go back to SG-1. And now they have their I've own exclusive streaming it. service. Yeah, that whole thing, uh, which is so silly, and that's never going to work because I see those seasons for ten dollars everywhere. But anyway, uh, Atlantis, I finally watched through uh, all of on its own. It's been years now; I don't remember. Well, you told me it. that you think I'd like that one. You would. It's 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 really good. Uh, and in some ways, I feel like it's what Voyager should have been. Uh, and then, um, and then I watched the first season of Universe, and it was uh, it was too heavy handed and, and 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 depressing and and, and intentionally depressed. You know, you know, it was trying too hard to be Battlestar. I also had this with Battlestar, and there's a lot of things where I just waited until they ended and then I finally went back and looked mm-hmm. at them. Uh, but I don't know, many of those things I actually finally went back and, and, and took a look at. But mm-hmm. there, I don't know, there's quite a few just like like uh, like science fiction franchises. They're just really big and daunting. Yeah. Uh, and I have that with, you know, book series and comics a lot. Uh, like, like, I, like I had that during uh, Ultimate Universe. I was like, I'm just, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna catch up. I'm never gonna know enough about this universe to jump in now. Um, but... Well, now it's over. You can. Yeah, but now it's. Kind I can roadmap you through that. In some ways, it's a moot point, and and too much of it. Uh, Vince, you always told me was kind of bad. So. Yeah. Or mediocre. Yeah. Which, in some ways, is worse. Uh, Eric, the next thing I wanted to ask you, sir. I I feel like you've told me your top one before, and I don't right off know if I'm right about it, but I'm going to ask you for your three. Okay. Uh, what are your three top Disney animated films? Um, uh, top is Great Mouse Detective. Dude, that's that's right. I knew it was one of the off the beaten path path ones, but I couldn't remember if it was that or the Rescuers or something. No, although I I do love Rescuers Down Under. I can't stand Rescuers. I think really? it's really boring. Uh, Rescuers Down Down Under, and, and part of it's because I had Rescuers Down Under as a kid, 
But I think I might have owned the Rescuers as well. I just didn't watch. By the way, I didn't even tell you this. That that documentary about the history of the animation of Disney that you told me to watch. Mm-hmm. I, I watched the night you told me about it's really it. Good, I right? found it. It's really good. Yeah. It's called uh, Waking Sleeping Beauty. It's uh, it's about the the Renaissance era of Disney. Which is weird because Sleeping Beauty is never ever mentioned in it. <laughs> no, because <laughs> it's not about that era. But or maybe she's maybe maybe that movie is mentioned at some point. I almost said she like she's a person. Um, but anyway, okay. So Great Mouse Detective is your favorite. Great Mouse Detective is my favorite. Um, Here's, have you gone back to it? Uh, not super recently. I mean, I've watched I it mean, a couple like, times. Are I you concerned at all that if you went back to it, you wouldn't like it no, at all? No. no okay. No. Okay. Um, no. And is it one that like is buried in your yeah, brain? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, no. 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 In there, you know. Okay. Oh, I, I love I love when he throws his drunken minion to uh, when Ragan throws his drunken minion to the cat and he eats him. It's great. Oh, um, we have it because that's one of Sarah's favorites. Yeah. Um, after that, see, here's the thing. I really I'm if you don't have it, you want to watch it. We've got a copy. I really want to say. Pardon me. That in my three is Black Cauldron, but in all honesty, I, I don't know it well enough to really say that. Um, and Pixar's not counting, just the no, just the country. just the animated cla- the classics. Um, okay, so when you say Black Cauldron, like like would would that be just trying to uh, like push against the norm, or I think that movie is way too poorly misre- misremembered, and I like that movie. But I've only seen it like once or twice. Like I don't really know it well enough to be like that's my that's one of my favorites. But so one of the reason I asked this is I was wondering if you were kind of uh, repelled by some of the like obvious choices just that everybody goes to like some of the, some of the no because my second favorite is probably Aladdin. Okay. okay. Um, uh, no, Aladdin's wonderful. Um, uh, and then for a third one, I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not a huge Disney person. That's why I asked it. Um. It's not a thing we talk about a lot together. No, no, because I'm just I'm not I'm not a huge Disney person. I'm trying to think of. Uh, we could have made that the big caveat, you know, make your questions things that we never talk about. But that's somewhat of what I did. Like most most of the movies that like I can think of, like I have issues with. Like I wouldn't put Lion King there. Yeah. I like I, I like Hercules a lot, but I wouldn't put it there. It's got too many problems. Um, but I do think that's my favorite. That's my favorite Disney villain is Hades. He's great. Yeah. Um, I don't know what my third one would be. And I know, I know you have issues with The Little Mermaid. Uh, oh, I hate The Little Mermaid. Yeah. Little, Little Mermaid's garbage. Which would um, be on my list, but for nostalgic reasons. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to try to defend no, it. That movie's, that movie's horrendous. But um, I, I can't even explain oh, why I um, tear up every time I see um, that. I'll, 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 I'll go back further and, 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 and go more classic. Um, uh, Sword in the Stone. Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, I, Sword in the Stone, I don't even know anymore. I mean, I saw it when I was a kid. Oh, Merlin's great. Uh, and and it's, uh, it's based on the first chunk of um, One's Future King. Like it is specifically that version of the the Arthur mythology, and not based on in the sense that Lion King is sort of almost sort of no no I, I I mean I mean it's a loose adaptation the way all Disney films are loose adaptations but uh, it's I mean it's 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 clearly that version uh, uh, that Merlin in that book does take Arthur and go and become animals and, and things like that. Like, well, I'm going to ask you that, because your answers are more interesting than mine would have been. Uh, what's your next question? My next question is. Uh, what's the most elaborate costume you ever worn, not for a production? So not any of the spawn year stuff. Well, um, I'm not the biggest costume guy, as you know. And uh, anytime I've done costumes, it's either been something I had somebody make for me, or it's been something that I rented or bought. Well, well and that, 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 so, that's why I put worn, not made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, whatever I say here, nobody be impressed, because I didn't make anything. Uh, elaborate? Probably 89 Joker. Okay. Um, I, I didn't did, know you ever did that. Yeah, I rented a costume uh, for that, and then Sarah and I came up with a makeup for it. Uh, oh, cool. And it looked pretty good. Uh, Sarah homemade a Supergirl costume for that party, oh. and it, it looked really, really pretty cool. And then, um, especially for then, you know, uh, before the cosplaying was as big, and before big, it was that was starting to get big right then, but we didn't know any cosplayers. Um, but uh, but I did that, and I and, and, and I rented. Um, I, I went to this costume shop in Lawrence, and uh, they had the full-blown purple suit from that movie. It was really cool, uh, with the pants and with the green pants and everything. Oh, cool! Uh, but then um, I also did uh, Data from TNG once, and we had we, we had a really good makeup for that. Um, my mom helped me figure that out. Well, didn't you also do cool. Farpoint? Um, for, uh, Q? Q, yeah, I forgot about that, and that was something uh, that a friend of mine made me. You uh, still have that lying around somewhere, I right? I do, yeah. I want to say I saw a part of that costume. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's kind of a cardboard mesh thing uh, with with the, with the hat that looks better than what I'm describing. I mean, it looks it looks really good. Uh, I have 
pieces of it. I think I had to give her one or two things back for another costume because she was always uh, kind of hobbling things together and, and, and using bits of things, and uh, I never got that part of it back. But I never got the headdress part of it back. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's that's about it. I mean, I've done a couple of Batmans, just store-bought things, but as far as things that won't store-bought, I think those are the two big ones. Cool. Um, the, uh, the 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 Q one you mentioned and the Joker and then and then the Data one um, was homemade in the sense that it was a homemade shirt that I found at a yard sale that was really good. Uh, this, you've seen it that gold shirt. Mm. Uh, and then, like I said, uh, my mom and I figured out, I figured out the makeup for that. Um, and you've done a lot of, in the way of costumes, really. I've not I'm not a costume guy. Uh, at some point, uh, it's been sitting on my list. But I never for had like... anything as 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 cool and elaborate as the Spawn costume. Uh, it, uh, on, on my list for After Dark for like three episodes now has been a topic about costumes that I haven't gotten to. Oh, interesting. And, and, and I looked at my After Dark list, and the only thing I have listed right now is that, that question. That's the last question. I have. That's the only question I have for After Dark right now. Now, I will say that... Topic. Uh, I, I, I'll j just quick plug. Um, there will be a costume about as elaborate in Batman here, mm. but that's all I'll say. And I haven't seen it yet, so I'm saying it'll be it'll be as elaborate. I'm I'm pretty sure it will be. Uh, I can't I can't I can't wait. It's gonna be great. Um, okay, so Eric, uh, who you, you have you have finally started delving a little bit into Star Trek? Who is your favorite character in all of Trek at the moment? Would you say? I mean, it, it's it's always been McCoy, but it's beyond still McCoy. Okay, but beyond McCoy, who would be who would be like um, this like the second then? Right now, um, Eric's been working his way through TNG. Yeah, I've been working my way through TNG. Um, Uh, it's either Data or Riker. Uh, probably tipping more towards Riker just because I'm one reading a book with Riker and Data hasn't been in the last couple episodes I've watched, so he's like mm -hmm. not in my mind. But one of those two, I really, I really like Data. Um, and I don't. Have you gotten a spot yet? You kept you kept saying like, when does Data's cat show up? Like, have you have no, you gotten any spot? Seen, you haven't gotten any spot yet. Spot. Okay. Um, no. Uh, and Riker was always the character from the very little bit I'd seen of TNG that I liked. Um, I don't have a great sense of who he is as a guy, but like I, I, I like Jonathan. It's just Frakes. that Jonathan Frakes is that charismatic, and after season one, they finally let him do his thing. Mm -hmm. So bring some of him to that. I'll say probably thing. Riker, but I, 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 I like Spock. Well, and I, yeah, and, and I love Picard, um, but that's more Patrick Stewart than it is anything. Yeah. Yeah, but Picard as a character gets interesting more and more as we get through. I mean, we finally had family, and that defines him a lot. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. Uh, if, if, in, in where he is, uh, Eric kind of started with season four and, and filled in with some two and three. I thought he needed to watch, but yeah. uh, after we watched Best of Both Worlds, yep. What is That's your what next happened. question, sir? I forgot. I had another question. I was like, okay, so what's what's next? But I forgot. It's, I it's also your, am asking questions. It's your turn, sir. Um, okay, so I've said many times on, yeah. on the channel uh, that like the first like women I saw when I was a kid, where I was like, oh, women. Was uh, Miss Tess Mocker in Superman and uh, and uh, Marty's mom in in Back to the Future? Uh, who was your first like TV movie crush? <laughs> oh, you're turtling. It's funny you mentioned turtles. <laughs> was it April O'Neil? It was, and and it was and it was specifically the animated April O'Neil. Oh. Which is interesting, and I can't explain why. But I, that, but I that think is, that is a thing that a lot of kids at that age. That is the first thing I yeah, and 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 not the movie one at all, really. I mean, I never really really thought of her in that way, even. She's kind of frumpy. I mean, I don't know if I would say that. I don't think she's unattractive. She's, she's, she's not dressed, my type. She's dressed that I feel way. Like, I don't mean her. Oh, as I see a what you mean. Okay, yeah. And she's that, got that big eighties hair. That, I was going to mention that. I uh, because because like because like, if you if she, if she was sporting something more modern, I think she'd be really super yeah, attractive. Yeah, probably. But, um. Yeah, that's that's my first. Do you have a person? Most certainly. Like 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 a human, per not animated person. Going back, f maybe Vicky Vale from '89, maybe. Okay, but I'm actually not sure because here's the thing: I can't remember a time where I wasn't interested in women, where, where like I didn't like girls. I mean, uh, I don't know that was, either. When but... I was four or five, I had a female friend that we that we called girlfriend and boyfriend like mm. you know you know some of us seem to grow up and in, in like already like the opposite sex that way yeah, I, without I having any idea what we're talking about but we just, it's just you know, i find girls attractive you know mm. what i mean um and, and of course like you knew you knew kids that had like the cooties thing mm. and uh, i, did, I, I never that. had that at all so it, 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 i i struggle a little bit uh to say to, to say what the first uh, I, I like like a, a person person was mm. um but it might have been it might have been vicky vale it certainly wasn't anybody from Star Trek. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that I that I was that I was into right then. 
Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Simple so, question. They have a great question. That was a my great answer, but one. There's a <laughs> there's um. You know, you, your answer is whatever your answer is with that. You know, uh, Eric, I know you are a big George Carlin fan, and I have yes. heard, and I have heard you before say uh, that like like kind of almost make fun of yourself for your personal heroes versus other people's personal heroes, and I and I've heard you put Carlin in that list. Besides Carlin, mm. um, give me two or three other of your like famous in popular culture personal heroes. Okay, well, I mean, the other obvious one is Shane Black. Okay, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have anybody I wouldn't think of? We know each other too well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you get stumped with this, I will give you a follow-up Carlin question. Okay. Um, I, 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 I mean, I mean, I discovered him much later. Mm -hmm. uh, but another comedian that I, I put on a similar place uh, in my heart with Carlin is Bill Hicks. Um, I love Bill Hicks. He's he's another comedian who, much like Carlin, at least later Carlin is. Much more the court jester of giving you the bad news in joke form. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and 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 I I, I really like that. Um, I'm trying to think of like real like personal hero person because most of it's just kind of people that, like I kind of aspire to. Uh, well, that's kind of the idea. Like like you know, like like uh, JMS people that you want to be like uh, or emulate. Or... It's mostly writers. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's JMS. It's Fraction. Peter David. It it it, it, it it's it's mostly all writers. Um, and uh, and um, Dr. Cox from uh, from uh, Scrubs. I've never even seen that. <laughs> Everyone else is laughing. That does not in any way sound like a thing. Um, I'm like, no, it's 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 whatever. He's 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 like Dr. House. I also like Dr. House. Okay, real um, quick. Here's yeah. My, okay. my parents are really in the in the house. Um, I don't like House as a show. I like House as a character. Yeah. Well, house. they say that too, though. Oh, okay. To be fair. Okay. Interesting. Um, okay, so here so, is Car Carlin follow up question. Here's my Carlin follow up question. Um, without getting into, and if this brings you too much on the spot, then we don't have to do this question. Sure. But, um, but I, I, without getting into the gritty details, because obviously uh, Carlin is a guy who would uh, I, I say whatever was on his mind mm -hmm. uh, and didn't censor himself in any way whatsoever. Uh, is there any, again, without without getting into gritty details, is there is there any subject on which at large you ever found yourself disagreeing with Carlin? Um, yeah, I, I actually think, especially as he gets older, Carlin has a similar thing to uh, to uh, Penn and Teller. Well, not Penn and Teller, Penn. Um, yeah. Uh, where uh, some of Carlin's older sets, he can't even briefly mention religion without talking about how stupid it is. Like, he will interrupt a bit to make sure you know that religion is dumb. Um, and I don't know if I disagree with him, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, so that's a place where you just kind of disagreed with, with, with how he conducted himself. Yeah. But is there any topic where you're just like, I'm not with him on that? Because, I mean, obviously, like, like, like when you listen to Carlin's uh, uh, sets, uh, and I've, I've finally been catching up on Carlin a little bit. Oh, have you? you? Yeah. Well, because you messaged me the other day and asked me if, if, I, if I knew the Joe Pesci skit. That was, that, was, that was great, yeah. I pray to Joe Pesci. But, um, he but also says he prays to the sun, and it works yeah. out about the same 50, 50 That's right, 50. that's right. <laughs> um, but uh, but like, like whenever you, you listen to him talk, you know exactly what he thinks about every subject and mm -hmm. obviously he he will exaggerate as a comedian and he talks about that mm -hmm. but um but he's he's never lying about his uh personal beliefs about things you can always you can always tell um when he's making up stuff and when he's which is for the most part uh like saying exactly what he thinks about something but is there any like broad topic that you just don't tend to to, to agree with him on um because I was curious, I guess the reason I'm asking is, I was I mean, this is a loaded follow-up question. I guess the reason I, I'm asking is because I wonder uh, how much of your interest in Carlin is, is how funny his comedy is and how much of it is uh, you agree with him, like, politically and ph philosophically. I mean, it's a lot that. Is it? Um, I, I mean, I also think he's a really funny guy, and he, he has just a complete putty face, and he makes great, great faces. Um, but, uh, I, I, I mean, with Carlin, it's a lot of that. He's that, a good orator, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a lot of the stuff with, with Carlin is... Uh, just uh, that, that truth teller kind of thing. I, I don't line up with Carlin kids. Carlin hates kids. I don't line up with Carlin that's the, kids. That's the place I wasn't sure. Of, one of the places I wasn't sure about. Yeah, that yeah. I thought maybe you would, you, um, you would be sure about too. I don't feel the same way about kids as George Carlin. I think he's. I, I think his jokes about kids are funny. Uh, but I, I don't. I don't line up on kids. Some um, of the things he says about kids, I do agree with. But. <laughs> well, yeah. Because <laughs> he's a truth more teller. The, more the way adults deal with them than kids themselves. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Um, well, he, he's he's got he's got a great bit about school uniforms. Where yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and and, and I and I like this whole thing about like like just uh, uh, just leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite Carlin joke about kids is. Uh, Aside from him assuring assuring the entire audience after he talks about how terrible kids are that he knows who he's talking about because he was Mr. Conductor. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My my favorite my favorite column bit about kids is how to tell how to tell if your kid's dumb, which is uh, when your kid's like four or five years old, you take them out to the bus stop near your house and you leave them there, and you come back a week later and if, and if they're still there, they're a dumb kid. <laughs> I did I didn't hear that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh, um. Also, this is I would never condone that behavior. Going back to the first one of, of personal heroes, yeah. this is one that's largely like bull, but whatever, because I've never actually read the man's work. But uh, Harlan Ellison seems like uh, <laughs> an amazing individual, and uh, I aspire to be him when I grow up. He's fascinating. Uh, I would never want to be that carotid, but yeah, I mean, but you would. Yeah, I, I, I would. <laughs> I, 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 no, he's he's great, and I love just how matter of fact he is about everything and. Because he's never wrong. Like, sometimes he's he's extreme, but he's never wrong. Um, all right, let's see what I got. We need, like, transition music. Okay, um, so this really is an After Dark bit that we've done before, but oh, it's different. okay. How many... You're welcome. Um, how many... Regular subscribers. How many videos slash video series have we planned to do since I got here that we haven't done? Like, how many can you list? Like things that we yeah. have, have said we would do. You would almost have to help me out with this, but yeah. Um, so uh, now, do do we count things that morphed into something else? Because uh, we did have that uh, late night talk show that kind of morphed. Yeah, into yeah. Not things like that. Things we're still genuinely being like, yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that, man. I know there's a bunch, and every time I, I think about it, it blank. You know, where, I, where I'm just like, I know we have a million. Well, we have the pilots. We have been saying that we were gonna watch the lowest. We we're gonna do a commentary yeah. for Lois and Clark pilots yeah, since I got there's here. There's a lot. There's a lot of commentary. There, there, I mean, there's a few commentaries on things here and there that we were going to do. Um, wow. I don't know why this is the one I feel blindsided about. but Because just, just the other day we were talking um, about like all of the things that we've said we were going to do, and it's a year later and we still haven't done that. There's a lot of vaults. There are a lot of vaults. Um, it, it tends to be like vault series and stuff because because mm. you know we, we wanted we did make the first Ultimate Spider-Man video I haven't gotten that posted yet but mm. we, we but we wanted to we wanted to do that um, you know you know uh, uh, all together or, or like you know um, in, in in a series uh, a lot of it is just like series that don't that that we would not realistically be able to really do right now you know what I mean uh, like like you wanted to do Avengers page by page I'm not even doing Spider-Man page by page anymore because it's just it it just it I, I don't have enough time in the mm. day. I, like Dan and I are eventually going to get back to that and do a few issues at a time. But like right now, neither of us has the time mm. uh, to keep working through it page by page. Um, man, I know there was some. St I know there's a ton. Of, and I, as soon as we turn this off, I'm going to remember a million things. And um, do you remember one or two? I mean, you can help me get jump started on this. Um, not off the top of my head. Yeah. Okay. So uh, okay. So follow up question. Uh, we uh, we were going to play with Legos, and that, that still might plan? happen. But that's the thing we've been talking about. Since early We've been on, talking about that for because a long, Cap long time. and I both suck at making things. We're, we're, neither of us are like constructive. -y. Yeah, um, we're not good so, with our hands. so we thought it'd be fine to make a video where we see how long it takes us to make something. Yep. Uh, we, we've been talking about a twenty-four video for a long time. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, we were talking about doing the twenty-four and twenty-four hours project again, and I yep. have a new idea about that that I'm not going to mention yet because uh, Aaron thinks I'm joking, but I'm totally serious about it. Uh, it's going to cost me one hundred and fifty dollars. That's all I'll say. Uh, what else? We uh, we talked about a sitcom. Yes. That I wrote the pilot for. You did, right? And there had oh, to be I, snow on the I ground. I'd forgotten about that. And uh, then the snow melted before I was able to coax you into getting the gumption to do it. Because you said you you weren't sure if you w would be willing to do what I wrote in the script. I don't think and that's exactly true. No, I no, it is. I just never got around to writing. No, it, you, you, said, you said you couldn't decide if you, you, you were willing. You were going to me. No, we were going to do that off screen. No, <laughs> no, the, no the, the, thing, the thing you said you weren't sure you'd do was the snow angel thing. Oh it was yeah, really cold, cold outside, and uh, I wasn't sure if I could get you to do it. And then before I had a chance to keep arguing with you, not arguing, but before I had a chance to, to really convince you to do it, uh, then, then the snow was off the ground. So, um, but uh, I have given that script to the uh, fifteen dollars patrons. Oh, uh, cool! So I, I went ahead and let them read it. I don't know if they, anybody that read that, let me know what you thought of it. But um, we talked about doing a thing I, I called "I've Got Eric in My Basement." Where uh, I I would I would play I would basically act like I really am where you know you guys don't actually get to see it I'm kidding uh, where I would be like like a tyrannical dictator telling Eric what to do uh, living in my house and uh, 
I had a lot of fun. That the idea pilot. seems I so much, do much of so, 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 so much more fresh when I first got here. Yeah, now it's been a year. Yeah. I don't even I don't even know if it would make sense to do at this point. But uh, so 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 my follow up question yeah, to, to, that, to that first question or list there is there is a bunch of stuff. And honestly, part of the problem is we never did write any of them down. No, we wrote and down. that really yeah. that really needs to happen. Um, uh, but but my, my follow up question would be, what is like a video that you have wanted to make for years and have never gotten around to. Like, 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 is there like one big video where you're like, I've always meant to really do this and I've never really done it. Okay, so I used to have one and I finally made it. Okay. The the big one that not nearly, uh, not a whole lot of people cared about, but this is just for me. I finally made my, made, made my Cool Spot video. I always wanted to make that. I uh, love Cool Spot. It was a thing from my childhood. I really want to make a video about 500 people watched it. Thanks for the 500 people who, who watched that video. Uh, but yeah, that was the thing I wanted to make for the longest time. Um... There are. You're gonna check the YouTube metrics. Your, your cool spot video is gonna spike after this. There are uh, some <laughs> some. Ra I'll put it in the description maybe. Uh, uh, check that out if you didn't have a chance to do that. I, I reviewed every cool spot game and gave an overview of the commercials in a half hour. Uh, it was one of the most economical things I, I, I've, I've ever made. Um, one of them is a thing that's going to happen eventually, so I can't talk about it. Okay. Uh, and you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think I do. Um, there are a couple of rewinds. Uh, that I'm I'm itching to to do at some point again things I don't really want to talk about because mm -hmm. uh, people are gonna start asking me forever when, when, like like when is it finally gonna come out you know that kind of thing um, and then I don't know like nothing I can talk about really because okay. I, I think a lot of it's just stuff I'm, I'm finally gonna you're um, finally doing yeah one of them uh, is less a video but would probably turn into a video which is uh, as I mentioned before uh, my Power Ranger badge. That that's a bit. I've got to do that in some form. Mm. Like that, that really in some form. I really want to get that out and make that happen. But um, but yeah. Uh, and then like, the, I, I want to do more tick stuff. Uh, there's a tick, there's a tick series I've always wanted to make that Jeff and I are going to do eventually after the, after Team B. So I don't know. I, I don't I don't feel like there's any singular video where I'm like I have plans for everything. Mm -hmm. um, so everything I'm thinking of are things that like are either kind of in the can or things that I'm planning on doing. But I guess anything you've always really wanted to do, you'd sort of be planning. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Tickopedia. Tickopedia is a big thing. Uh, that's not a video and would not, you know, be part of my job. It would be a total hobby thing. Uh, but yeah, um, so the Tick has a lousy uh, uh, fan wiki, and uh, there are some there are some articles in it, and there's some fine articles in it, but it's 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 poorly put together. It's poorly organized, and there's not enough there. And uh, since the new Tick series dropped, uh, a few people have gone in and started putting in some entries from that show. But it still looks dreadful, and nobody's putting in a lot of comic book stuff. And I've been thinking for a long time. And then after I say this, I, I just thought of the big one that I actually don't know if I'll ever get around to. Okay. I finally can, I okay. finally remembered it. Yeah. Um. But uh, I'm, I'm stalling. I finally thought of it. Uh. But there is, uh, but I would love to like start going in and actually overhauling the Tick Wikipedia. Uh, I think it should be called Tickopedia. Um, I'm kind of surprised that it's not called that. Uh, if anybody wants to go in and change it and see if the people working on it will let you change it, feel free to do it before me. Obviously, I don't own this or anything. Like, I'm talking about it like, like I want to be the leader of it and run point. I just want it to look good. Mm. So, like, I'd love to get with some other people and, like, amass a group that really likes the Tick and can write well mm. and make that a powerhouse Wikipedia like the Star Trek and the Star Wars ones, you know? Because um, most things and that Trek are that Wars small... Like that. Yeah, most the, and Power Rangers is pretty good. Mo most things that are that small are pretty bad. Mm. And uh, the, the Tick is no exception, and I'd love to see it organized right. Like, it doesn't even have tabs for the different series, and it's impossible to navigate. It's hard to tell how much is even there and what needs to be added to it. Um, okay, this 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 would be sort of, a, sort of a video series thing. I'm not sure how exactly I would handle it. Well, I, actually, this would be more like finding people in the community, in the YouTube community, the, the Geekvolution community, um, and doing videos with them, but probably not things that we would post for the channel. But I've been talking for years about doing a uh, writer's workshop. Yes. And yeah, that's probably the big one. Mm. Uh, that is the thing I really like to do, because I want to teach, and maybe I'll finally make that a second career, but I just have not had it in my 
in my day and my lifestyle where I can really go back to school and get my master's and go teach. And I really want to teach creative writing. So I've thought about doing it guerrilla style and uh, cre- and, 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 and teaching just a group. And, and, you know, like the entry fee would be real small. Mm. Um, but I, but like, but like I would, I would charge just a little bit and, and, and get a, and get a class and do an independent study uh, I, that, that would not be linked, of course, to any kind of university or anything. Um, and I've brought this up a couple times and I've always gotten a lot of interest in it, uh, which makes me feel good. You know mm. that anybody would be would, would be willing to come to a class that I would teach. But it's a thing uh, that I have not figured out how to get into my day. But I really want to do that. Cool. The creative writing independent study. But anyway, that was lengthy. Uh, yeah. You're you're sorry about that. That's cool. Uh, Eric, what do you think? Because you you you've always been in, into superheroes and stuff, but I know you you uh you got into reading comics, especially like as religiously as you do, later than I did, um, and and I and I'd love to know what is it about that particular medium and industry you think uh, that got you to the place where you felt like you had to kind of like scrounge and know everything about it. Um, I don't know because you have that more with comics than you do anything. Um, well, um, so when I'm. Or no, I've got, to, I've got to be hearing that because my parents aren't divorced yet. At some point, I get a box of comics from my uncle. Um, yeah, you told me about yes, that. Yes, yes. And so, so this starts me reading comics, and I've always liked comics, and I watched all the superhero cartoons. Um, and then somewhere I start... Because uh, I start reading, reading before I start following current. Like, I start following current around Civil War uh, Infinite Crisis, but I'm reading trades and stuff before that. Um... I don't know. Maybe it's because um, I think in a lot of ways comic book creators, especially going backwards, have been more vocal than anyone else. And there's a lot m- more information out there about them. Um, so you so, think you're kind of naturally a behind-the-scenes guy? Yeah. And you're able to get more information about the thing as opposed to just... Yeah. Well, that and there are... Reading it. There are so many um, um, different things... Um, with like with like podcasts and stuff, where uh, there are people that are at least somewhat worth worth listening to, uh, talking about things, and so I, I I was I've able I've been able to pick up a lot of like just you know, strange spare knowledge that like I didn't come by genuinely. I just kind of know like these people worked on this book and their story was this. There because there was a day where you said something like Excalibur. I was like, oh, that's that's the uh, that's the Alan Davis story where they where they go back in time. You're like, why do you know that? I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess. Uh, um, I, I really like comics as a medium, and especially getting into it, uh, we hadn't hit the image renaissance yet. I'm, I'm finding a lot of people that are where I am when I, or where I was when I got into comics, they have image, and so there was a lot of other stuff. All of the, not all of, it was still largely a superhero medium. Yeah. It, there was Preacher and Transmetropolitan and, and, and Hellblazer and a couple of things, but not like there is now. Where like you really can come into comics and, and read anything, um, and well, and in some ways I, I would argue that it feels like the big two is trying to hang on to that. Mm-hmm. Well, and 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 access is, uh, you know, you you can walk into books a million, you can pick up Saga. Uh, when I started reading comics, you walk into a, into a books a million, and you might be lucky if they had some preacher, or some Hellblaze. Like it wasn't as accessible as comics. And the libraries didn't use to stock them like they do now. No, li- my, my my library uh, used to stock it, stock I mean, them terribly. Libraries are great for comics now, um, and especially adult comics. They had like none of. Like I read the first volume of Walking Dead because that's all they had. Like you've seen the rack at that uh, at, at, at oh, it's the extensive. library I go to. It's really good. Um, Just imagine what it would look like if everything was there that wasn't checked out. Uh, but I, I I think I think really at the end of the day. Um, I think comics is a is a smarter medium than uh, than uh, than than film and and get and television especially when you're looking at uh, a serialized medium right yeah and and, and it gets to uh, one of my big draws to comics was the comics in the eighties that comics gets to talk about things nobody else gets to talk about because mm-hmm. nobody's paying attention and that to makes comics. them inherently less formulaic um, that and that's gone away almost completely because comics are so big and people are paying attention to them and if you say anything that is out of line there's six blog posts immediately about it. Um, so comics has kind of lost that charm a little bit, but it, it's, it's the medium where you can really do whatever you want because no one's, no one's watching. Um, but uh, Yeah, but, but with the image renaissance, I think you do have that over there. Yeah. To some, to some degree. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think they get blasted as, as, as hard as DC and Marvel if, if they do something that might be 
Uh, well, I think some of those other companies, some of the stuff Dark Horse and IDW are doing and stuff, can be kind of under the radar. Um, but it, it really is. It's it's that it's that merger of it's it's the halfway point between novels and films. Right. Um, and it's the speed of them. Uh, as 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 you know, I tend to go in phases of things. For two weeks, I'm really into horror, and then I'm really into Batman. Then, and comics are great for that. I think that might be why I end up knowing so much about comics is. Uh, I, I, I can go through a bunch of comics in like two weeks and then when I'm in the mood for something else I can just go read some fantasy comics and I can go read something else and so I just uh, I go through phases of what I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in or uh, specifically based on like genre and stuff and it's just it's all there in comics and you I can read comics around. fast I mean I've seen you do you know two three trades in a day um, if I'm really invested yeah, um, yeah. so yeah, that that's probably uh, probably probably the answer is the speed at which I I, I can consume them, um, puts it above, because uh, because I'm not a super fast reader of, uh, when it comes to, to books and television takes as long as television takes. Right. Um, so that's that's probably ends up being why. And if you if you can read at your own pace, then even the the, the, the you know fifty sixty hundred issue runs feel like less a com- of a commitment than a seven season television show. Well, and that's that, that's the other thing is 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 uh, especially as you get into. Uh, the 80s and forward, you do get these massive stories told over, you know, a decade. And you don't really get that anywhere else outside of, I guess, maybe long-running novels, but novels are even more self-contained novel than or used to be more self-contained Or you novel mean the novel. novel series, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, cool. yeah, so that's my best guesstimate on that. I don't really have a definitive answer. What is my next one? What do we have, two left? Yes, six and seven. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so this is a very... I mean, this is a question that's been asked a thousand times, I think, probably. But it's a very in-the-moment kind of a thing and, and, and where we are in the world and this kind of thing. Yeah. If you could travel in time, mm-hmm. would you? And, and you could only pick one way, would you go backwards or you, would you go forwards? Would you see where we're going or would, would you see where we've been? I think I'm too, at the moment, curious about the future. I think there was a time, not that long ago even, mm. uh, when I would have... Because I am unabashedly uh, a really nostalgic person. Mm. And I think there is... Uh, I, I think at one time I would have I would have said it would be really fascinating to... If, especially if I got to pick the time. It would have been really... Fa- or, or if you could only go in your own timeline, mm. uh, you know, like like Doctor Who. Um, see, I know something about Doctor Who. Uh, I, I, That's actually the opposite could, of what Doctor Who's rules are. You can't cross your Oh, you your can't cross line. your... Okay, I don't know anything about Doctor Who. I'm kidding. <laughs> I knew that. But not right now. Close it's an no in the cigar. moment question. <laughs> and in this moment, that's a thing that I forgot. Anyway, uh, I knew that. Really, I did. Uh, really, I did. Um, no, I, if 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 you could if you could like if you could like you know you know pick, um, I would uh, totally. Uh, there was a time where I would have said that uh, it would be really interesting at the age I am now to go back and uh, see and, and interpret my own childhood. Uh, and see what it was really see like. See what it was really like, yeah. Uh, and that would have been interesting. On un- that would have been interesting to me over going forward, but not now. Uh, the 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 world right now is as Arnim Zola says in Winter Soldier, fascinating, and uh, yeah, I I want I want to know I want to know where we're going to be in five or ten years because I think the the, the uh, I mean I don't I don't like to talk about politics much but uh, but I feel like um, socio politically uh, and uh, and and just like you know, like social climate in general um, we could be looking at an entirely, what looks like a totally different world in 10 or 20 years, I feel like. I mean, I think there's a whole lot that could change on us just really hard and fast for, like, a number of different reasons. Um, in, 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 you know, you know the, the way I, the, the way the country is so polarized, the way um, the, the, the rest of the world is looking at us right now, um, and who knows uh, who our leaders are going to be in, in just in, in a few years, and that's always the case, but, like, it, that's just more and more fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just, I think I would if, if you gave me a lever that was forward or backward, uh, no matter how far forward it was, I'd be like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta know. You know, I like, I, I don't know, I don't know if it's even as Americanized of a world in ten or twenty years. Like, I just, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it looks like. So, that's interesting. Yeah, I gotta know. Do you feel the same way, um, or do you just not want to know? Or are you so scared of the future that you don't even want to? I know? actually think in the past two or three years, I've, I've, I flipped. I feel like I would have been the guy that goes forward, and now. I'm kind of really scared of where we're going. 
uh, and I would I would go backwards. I I, I would retreat. I I think. Um, yeah. Uh, that is uh, that is a great question. Um, it might have been revealing, but that's a great question. Okay, uh, so th this will probably be a quick question, Eric, but I know you're not uh, a, a big musical guy, but I'm curious uh, if you decided you wanted to, uh, to, 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 be, to work on that and you, and, and you had to choose an instrument to learn, what instrument would you Violin. choose? Really? Yeah, I, and I had I'm the I'm surprised you had an answer that fast. I had the opportunity as a child uh, to learn the violin, and uh, I thought violins were dumb, and so I didn't. Um, no, I love the way the violin sounds, and I mean, there's the Sherlock Holmes connection, all of that. But I, I, I really like the violin. Interesting. I, I would, I, yeah. You know, Brandon is a professional violin violin player. That came out um, when we were talking Brandon's sister. Brandon's sister, yeah. Yeah, that he's that he's like an insanely talented violinist. He is, and she's not exaggerating. He really is. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what I thought you'd say. I figured it would be some kind of rock instrument. No, I, that's interesting. I really like the violin. Yeah. That is legitimately a thing I didn't know about you. Um, we are learning some things. Yeah, I think. Yeah. All right. So this is the last one. Uh, yep. Right. Favorite child. Down to the wire. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the look of terror in your face. The one we may someday have. Um. So. So obviously, as a kid and now, uh, you, you, you've always been interested in science fiction. Uh, Star Trek's a big part of it. Um, but as a kid, were you a space kid? Were you like? Like, were you a kid that kind of wanted to be an astronaut and was, like, really interested in going to space, what we're going to find in space and that whole thing? Yeah. Or did you only like it fictionally? Isn't it interesting? I wasn't. Not at all. Interesting. Uh, I, and, and, and I don't know, it's weird, like, again, I was just interested in fictional things, and so I don't think I ever even really thought about it. I was never a science guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I think of myself as, as a kind of pseudo-science fiction writer. Uh, I don't know Jack for anything about science. You know, mm -hmm. I'm interested in, uh, in in theoretical fiction, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the science stuff, I have to, like, look up or, or, or kind of skirt around, you know? Uh, and I guess I could have... Like, I was always interested in the notion of what might be out there, you know. So mm -hmm. I was I was interested I was massively interested in exploration. But I wasn't interested in being an astronaut. And I think part of that is because I felt like it was too limited and I didn't think in in my lifetime uh space travel would get such where we would get to the Star Trek level of it. Which we continues to, to which, be the case. Yeah. And NASA versus Star Trek looked lame to me, and I, I, I didn't, I, I couldn't really like put aside. Well, this is where we are now, and and, and this. I was, I was much more interested in immersing myself in a fictional world than I was uh, in imagining growing up and being in like the piddly, boring version of the, of the closest thing we have to Starfleet. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't at all a space camp. The space camp never appealed to me. Um, I didn't get excited about that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I I imagine myself a superhero before I imagine myself in space. Interesting, most certainly. But I had, um, I I, I had uh, I, you know fantasies about uh, vigilanteism all the time, you know that kind of thing. And I did think about uh, about uh, maybe being a policeman or something. I mean that that is a thing I thought about. But not going off into space, meeting alien life. No, we, not as like an actual. I, I, I as like no, because I didn't. Because I didn't figure you could. I thought if we, well, if we you were going to find it, it would come to us. You yeah. know. So I figured, well, if that happens, I'll be here already. You know? <laughs> um, I, I, I thought of things like, but it was all theoretical to, to me. Like, like I thought of things like, you know, if. Uh, some commercial or, or even NASA, but like 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 if because there was talk even in the '90s of eventually uh, some kind of like commercial aircraft that would uh, take you to uh, uh, like like a newly built space station or or, or like try to get all tickets. the way to Mars. I yeah, think yeah, that is a thing. yeah. And we were and we were talking about that then, and and I don't think you could yet, but I think we finally have done this. And um, I was like, I would have been the first person on board that. But I wasn't really interested in being like in NASA or making it a career, you know. Um, I was much more interested in being a tourist, I guess. All right. Yeah. Uh, wanted a captain a spaceship, but I didn't want a captain a space shuttle. That's sure, sure, that makes complete sense. Uh, so that's the last question. That's my last. Okay, question. my last question to you, uh, and th I shouldn't have saved this for the end. This is going to sound like a really strange question to end on. Just a thing I'm curious about, and this is going to sound sort of self-indulgent in the sense of I'm projecting something on you, and this might be a completely real quick, like not interesting thing to you at all. Um, but um, 
something I uh, I feel like I might have uh, landed on something to, to me I might have landed on something that I think you would be great at but I don't know if you would have any interest, interest in doing it and I'm curious if it's the thing you would ever consider doing so um, I know you like to write and you, and, and, and you want to write fiction mm -hmm. um, but like me uh, interestingly you uh, have have uh, have gotten to a point where you talk about it as much as you actually do it or, or more than you actually you know you know mm -hmm. you know do it and I'm curious knowing that and knowing that you're you're really good off the cuff. You're really good on your on your toes. Um, I wonder if you would ever consider journalism. Um, I've I have considered journalism, not in any like real way, where like I was gonna like go to school for it or anything. Yeah. Um. Uh. No. My my big hang up. Because if I was in journalism, I would want to be. Um, I would want to be. Uh, what's his name from Daredevil? Um, ben Urig. I'd want to be Ben Urig. Right. And, You're an investigative journalist. And I just don't... Well, well, there's two things. Um, one is, I don't have any connections with anybody, and, like, I wouldn't even know where to start kind of a thing. Um, I would want to break, like, the big cases and stuff, and I don't even know where to go with that. Yeah. Um, the second thing is, uh, journalism at this point is a joke and is kind of a dying... We're in a really weird place now where I don't even know who is credible. Like, I don't know what a legitimate, like... If I wanted to work for someone that... There is no Daily Bugle. Yeah. Like, everyone's... All of the major news industry... Uh, 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 Agencies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Institutions are kind of... Uh, like, clinging to some kind of credibility while they're also trying to get the clickbait crowd and, like... And, of course, there's tons and tons of independence. Yeah, well, it is easier now than it ever has been to uh, go on your own. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like being a private investigator, but right? But so like, much of that has no oversight. Yeah. Uh, and it's so opinion-driven opinion um, that a lot of times, like, I think that's almost as just, just as discreditable. No one's breaking stories. Like, everyone's... Uh, uh, it's that... Uh, uh, well, they are, but sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, what's relevant. Yeah, um, but yeah. you could maybe make a name for yourself if you're very, if you're very clearly, you know, above board. It's the uh, it's the ambulance chase chaser thing. Everybody's, everyone's trying to find the big thing, and most of the time it's nothing. Um, uh, no, no, I, I, I've thought about it. I just. I wouldn't even know where to start well, in journalism school and things like that. So here's the thing, you're, you're, you're thinking about just the investigative side, but I feel like you would be a really good interviewer, and that's part of the reason I asked this mm. question, is that you could do journalism within popular culture. Mm. Like, you could be the guy that's talking to the comic writers uh, and, and stuff instead of, in, instead of like, like just listening to them. I mean, like, I've, I've done this. Mm. Uh, it wasn't that difficult for me to break into that, and mm. I haven't done it in a long time, but it would be really easy to get back into it. Um, it, was, it was, and I've got, I've got some good contacts now and stuff. I just feel like you would be as good at it as I ever was, or better. Um, yeah, no, no. On that side of it, I, I, I'd be, I'd be interested in doing that. Yeah. Um, that that always seems interesting. But but then I, I would also again, on your toes. I think you'd be really good at coming up with questions on the spot and, and coming up with good follow up things and asking some of the stuff that, that other people probably wouldn't. And because you're really knowledgeable and you you know your stuff, it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be fla it wouldn't be fluffy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I I I'd consider doing that if I had an opportunity. Yeah. So I just I think that's something you'd be really good at that we've never talked about before. So that's why I brought it up. I was just like I feel like Eric would be like who's like that? Eric with a talk show. Who's I just, that? I feel like you'd be really good at it. Who's that? Uh, that 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 the, the the big famous interviewer, the one who's like always smoking a cigarette, and he's like he's like takes no prisoners. Is it is it is it Kochak? What's the? Oh, is there, yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be him for comics. <laughs> and see, I would have always I always wanted to be more of like the James Lipton side, you know. <laughs> So you had Tony Stark have uh, 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 have this adventure with uh, with with, uh, with uh, Captain America and Thor, where they talk about their history. But at that point, uh, Iron Man had uh, completely deleted his memory of all of those incidents while Matt Fraction was sleeping on your couch. <laughs> That's the thing, I don't know if you know that, uh, Matt Fraction's not that bad as for a while. Well, and obviously it's important to uh, build a rapport with people and not look <laughs> so much like a fanboy, but... No, that's, that's the last, that, that's a get him question. Yeah, but uh, that's the last thing you ask me. Well, because I know you'll never speak to me again, uh, <laughs> I'd like to know this. So, um, so, so you, so you, ha you have the question that you know he's never going to want to talk to you again, but he's still there and not hanging up. So then you ask the real tough question. Anyway, uh, well, I guess that's going to be it for us today. Uh, yeah. Unless, unless you had, unless either of us had anything. A secret else. eighth question. A secret eighth question. Nope. Nope. Why do you hate spaghetti? Uh, I know the answer to that. You'll have to answer that. Captain Cap Cap hates hates spaghetti. 
Um, it's more that I got tired of spaghetti, and I will never not be tired of spaghetti. I, I, I don't I don't think. But anyway, well, folks, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, kind of unusual Geeks Not Nerds, and we will be back to Geeks Not Nerds revisited shortly. Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and we will see you again soon. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. See you, folks. <laughs>